Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to take a look at making another holster. This one is from one of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies. This is from Pale Rider. Now he plays a preacher that kind of goes in and saves this little town, so that's why the get up's here. But anyways, he totes a 1858 or a new model army. Some people might call it the 1863, but it is a new model army. This is a reproduction of it. Now he carries a uh, cartridge conversion of this firearm, which means means that instead of it being a black powder firearm, it actually carries a cylinder that will hold cartridges. Now I do not have a, I do have a cartridge conversion, but I do not have extra cylinders for it. So I've got some extra cylinders for the uh, regular 1858 or the new model army. These are 44 caliber and this is a 45 right here. It doesn't work in here, but the cartridge conversion or the cylinders, you can actually get cylinders that are made to hold cartridges in there. There's a little cap that goes over the end and it will fit in the gun and fire. Um, now we're gonna make the holster like the movie, as close as I can get to the one in the movie anyways, which is, uh, it's a black holster. It's just a plain, simple, smooth. He's a preacher, so he doesn't have anything real fancy, but it's just a black holster with a brown belt and it, the belt has nine, cartridge loops on it and two loops to hold spare cylinders. Now it's kind of weird in the movie when you look at the, uh, the cylinder loops on there, I'm not sure how they hold in there. So I'm going to make it the best way I can. And I know how the bullet loops are done. Um, but there's a rim on the bullet to keep it from pulling all the way through. Uh, and there's not one on the cylinder. So it might be a little tricky to do. The holster will be pretty easy. It rides kind of high on his right side. Uh, it, it hangs vertically. So the, the firearm is going to hang straight up and down. And it, like I said, it rides kind of high on there, but, uh, I've got a little chunk of leather here. I've got a piece of paper here somewhere that I started working on a pattern and I'm going to get it finalized, get it all cut out, get it cut out of this piece of, I think this is about 10 ounce, nine or 10 ounce leather. It's pretty thick stuff, but this is a piece that's just big enough. It's got a fairly smooth back on it. Um, and we're going to get it cut out, put the loop on the back of it, and then we're going to go ahead and make the belt. Let's dive into this thing. All right, now it's really hard to get some good shots of the movie to see exactly what the holster looks like. Uh, the best shot of the holster itself is when he goes to the uh, safe deposit box and pulls the holster out and throws his clergy collar back in there. But from what I can tell, it is a Slim Jim style holster and which is perfect for this firearm. Uh, it's really long, really narrow, and it does have a trigger guard cut out on it. And it kind of curves on this spot and then goes straight up and then rounds over there. So I'm going to get this cut out at least to the midpoint and then fold it over. Now on the back side of it, I'm not going to have the flap to wrap around there because it just doesn't have that on this holster. It uh, has a loop on the back of it, similar to this right here, that is going to be what holds it on the belt there. And we're going to go ahead and make the back of it like this and make a slim holster like this to go on this belt. So I'm going to get to cutting on this right here and then we'll get it folded over and get the other side of it traced out. Okay, it's going to be a right-handed holster, so that'll actually be the outside of it there. This will be the back, this will be the front there, and that should be wide enough, I hope, to fit this gun in there and give it a good look to it anyways. At least I hope it will. <clears throat> Alright, the other thing I got to do is I got to put the strap on the back of it there. Now I'm going to put a inch and three-quarter wide piece on there. I've already got the piece of leather cut out and what I'm going to end up doing is sewing it on there like that and then folding it over and making that loop real similar to the one that's on here, just a little bit wider and this will be a little bit thicker leather so it'll be a little sturdier on there.
All right, got a nice sharp blade on there. We're gonna go ahead and get this leather cut out. I did about three back stitches on there and it looks pretty good like I said other than this twist but once I get it wet and softened up then I can uh, hopefully get it to the shape it's supposed to be so now I'm gonna try to stuff this thing down in there and it's gonna be a little tough but uh, once I get it wet I'll get the gun all wrapped up in plastic and then uh, get the holster filled up with water and get it nice and soft and then I'll cram this in there and hopefully everything will work out all right. Okay, I've got the firearm wrapped. I've got it, the holster wet and I've got it shoved down in there. And if you'll look at that seam now, it's pretty straight, pretty even on there. Had to do a little tweaking and everything. But once it's wet, it softens up a lot and it'll move around a lot too. So we will get this thing kind of set up where I want it and then hopefully we'll get a little flare on there hopefully it'll stay like that when it's done now I did use hot water on it and that will make it harden up and stay just like it is so hopefully that'll give me the end result that I'm wanting okay believe it or not here it is day two and the holster is dry it's nice it's pretty straight looking to me anyways. Uh, it fits very well. 
there is a little bit of retention in there just because of the curve of this and where that front sight post is. It'll probably cause a little bit of wear over time. I'm not going to use this holster a whole lot, probably for one video actually, but everything fits in there nice. I did stick a billet through there so that it would hold the uh, belt loop in place overnight while it dried and it's pretty good. I'm going to get this thing dyed up. Now this gets dyed black. The rest of the uh, holster setup gets dyed brown. I've already got a billet cut out for the belt. So I'm going to get this thing dyed black and then let it sit and dry. And then I'm going to start working on the belt. Okay, I've got my first coat of water-based dye on there. It's a little splotchy looking. And one of the things that I have found out, I've done in the past, is I have actually used antiquing gel to dye and it really does a good job of it. You really got to work it in there though, rub it in really well. Um, and I use a little piece of sheepskin here. Get a little bit on there and then really rub it into there. And it'll kind of, where there might have been waxed areas or something from the thread, it'll kind of burnish into that a little bit. And it really does give a nice, even, smooth coat on there. Uh, once I got that base dye on there, that water-based dye kind of really soaks in there. And this lays a nice, even coat on it. All right, we'll let that dry and then get busy on that belt. Okay, I've got my belt billet here. I cut it inch and five-eighths wide because I have an inch and five-eighths belt buckle to put on there. Uh, the little bit of extra width will make it a little bit easier to attach the cylinder loops on there. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do to keep this from falling through other than maybe making it just a really tight friction fit, which is all I can see that's in the movie there because it's really the strap that goes across there is not wide enough to have a bottom on it. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what I can come up with. Um, but anyways, we're going to get the belt end of this done, punch the holes in it, and then uh, get the belt attached to it, and then we'll figure out our length. Okay, I got the Phoebings Pro Dye, alcohol-based dye. You definitely want to use gloves with this because it does not wash off the water. It does stain your fingers because you are made of leather and it will be there. So, we'll get it chook up a little bit, get you a disposable container. You can reuse it. Just use it for dye all the time. It's pretty strong. I want to get enough in there to make sure that everything is submerged. All right. 
The hardest part's gonna be getting those loops down in there. So I'm gonna start with that end and hope for the best. Be prepared for the worst. All right, one of the things I've noticed on here is this is where some of the uh, gum track got on there and it did not it did not penetrate in there. That kind of acted as a resist, which I don't want, but like I did with the holster itself, and I've also used two different hides here, so I've got different colors on those two. So I think what I'm gonna do is when this dries, I'm going to take, um, I have some brown uh, antiquing gel, like I did with the holster, I'll rub that in there and get a really, hopefully a really good coat on it. Okay, here it is day three. If you'll notice, I made a few mistakes. Um, it's, it's had a few, it's had a whole week to dry actually, because this is the next weekend. But what I did was I sewed my two loops on there for the uh, speed loaders, sort of, the cylinder holders. And this, the way this holster's made is, this is a narrow piece on here and it actually has to go on there before I put those on there because the holster itself goes between the cylinder loops and the bullet loops and I cannot get that through there. So I had to cut those off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this dyed with the uh, antiquing gel, hopefully even it out, especially those spots where the gum track got on there. And then once that's dry, I'll get a little bit of uh, satin sheen on it and then get this on there and then I can sew on my two cylinder loops. So I'm gonna get that done and then keep on moving and hopefully get this thing wrapped up. Okay, the belt's dry. It didn't quite come out like I wanted to. That gum track kind of screwed up the dye a little bit, but it'll be okay. Like Bob Ross said, it's a, a happy little mistake. Anyways, I've got to put the holster on here. That's where I screwed up the first time. I put the cylinder loops on there before I put the holster on and there's no way to get it on there. So I've cut those threads and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on there and it's gonna go right up against the cartridge loops, are pretty close to it anyways. It's the way he wears it in the holster. So you've got the cartridge loops there, you got the holster right there, and now I can put the cylinder loops on there. They were not gonna go, the holster was not gonna slide over top of these. So I'm gonna get these on there and I'm gonna make the stitches more closely resemble what was done in the movie and hopefully it'll turn out all right. It's not exact reproduction. I'm not trying to pull anything off on anybody. I'm just trying to make one that is real similar to what Clint Eastwood would have worn in the movie. Okay, got the cartridge loops on and the stitches are more like the movie stitches, I guess. Uh, little wax got in there and kind of acted as a resist, but now all I gotta do is get the buckle on there now the buckle in the movie was a clipped corner <clears throat> and most of the clipped corner belts I've found are wider than they are tall. His buckle was taller than it was wide. So this was as close as I could find and I got to get the uh, keeper on there. That's the first thing it's got to go on. So that'll go on like that. And also in the movie, I believe there were rivets that were used. I cannot confirm that because um, well, I just can't see them. So I opted to use Chicago screws on here. Now, Chicago screws are not authentic to the period of the movie anyways, but they are, they're nice because if you ever decide you want to change the buckle, if I ever find the correct clipped corner buckle that goes on there, um, I can remove these pretty easily. They're just a little double-sided screw that goes in there and, uh, holds it together. Sometimes they use snaps in there. Um, snaps are fine too because they won't actually, they won't pull off because they're not being pulled apart. They're being pulled um, at an angle. I think it looks pretty good. Black holster, brown belt. Okay, so there it is. There's the black holster, brown belt, the nine cartridge loops in the front, the buckles on it. I've got the two speed loader or cylinder loops on there. And it looks to me like it's just like it is in the movie. The only problem is, is 
These were probably props in the movie. They may not even have been made out of metal. I don't think I'd go horseback riding with these on there. They are pretty snug, so I don't think it's going to fall out just walking around. But um, these are not cylinder or not cartridge cylinders anyways. These are black powder cylinders, the ones I have. Um, and they would have carried them or they could have carried them like this it, back in the day. But uh, this is just a movie prop for me too. Not that I'm going to be making any movies. But that is pretty close to what appears to what it looks like to me in the movie. Um, and it is the 1858. It is a black powder. It does have the, uh, the ramrod and everything on it. It's just not the cylinder conversion. And he would have swapped it out and then put it in there. I'll have to practice on that. But there it is. All right, everybody, there it is. There's my version of the holster from the movie Pale Rider with Clint Eastwood. It is a pretty close replica of it, I think, anyways. Um, I do not have the cylinder conversion, so I do have the black powder cylinder in here, but uh, I do have the right firearm, just not the right conversion for it. Um, and I'm gonna keep on practicing that fancy move where he swaps the cylinders out while he's walking through town to his final gunfight and see if I can do it too without looking. And um, if you could hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos, hit this button over here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.